Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. The UN warns of rising famine in Yemen. UK denies Julian Assange's extradition appeal. Pedro Castillo faces impeachment in Peru's Congress. And thousands continue protests against coup in Sudan. 161,000 people in Yemen are likely to face famine in the second half of 2022. This will be a five-fold increase from the current figure of 31,000. 17.4 million people are dependent on food assistance, and this figure could reach a record of 19 million. An additional 1.6 million people are expected to fall into emergency levels of hunger, pushing the total to 7.3 million by the end of 2022. These figures were released by the United Nations following an integrated phase classification or IPC analysis. The report found that 2.2 million children are acutely malnourished. This includes over 500,000 facing severe acute malnutrition. IPC analysis shows 86 districts moving to higher food insecurity, with 95% of them shifting to emergency levels. Yemen has been undergoing a devastating war for seven years. The Saudi-led U.S.-backed coalition has also imposed crushing blockades, restricting imports of food and fuel. 377,000 people have been killed from direct and indirect causes, around 70% of which were children. According to UNICEF, at least 47 children were killed or maimed between January and February alone. The United Nations has verified that over 10,000 children have been killed since the Saudi-led intervention in 2015. The country has recently also witnessed a surge in violence. According to Yemen Data Project, the Saudi-led coalition carried out around 700 airstrikes in February alone. This makes it the most intense bombing period since 2018. We go to the United Kingdom, where a court has denied Julian Assange the permission to appeal his extradition to the United States. The Supreme Court ruled on March 14th that the application did not raise an arguable point of law. The case will be sent back to District Judge Vanessa Beretzer, who had originally assessed the U.S. extradition request. The case will be formally sent to the U.K.'s Home Secretary, Preeti Patel, who will make the final decision. Assange's legal team will have four weeks to make submissions before this. They will also have the option to challenge the extradition based on other issues of law which were raised at first instance. This includes the political nature of the indictment and U.S. prison conditions. The Supreme Court's decision on Monday was specifically on the issue of the assurances given by the United States. In December, the High Court overturned a ruling which had blocked Assange's extradition on humanitarian grounds. Judge Baretsa had declared the act oppressive on account of his high risk of suicide. The High Court threw out this verdict after the U.S. gave certain assurances about the condition of Assange's imprisonment. These had been rejected by his lawyers for being conditional and reversible. In January, Assange was granted permission to appeal the High Court's verdict in the Supreme Court. The court has now declined to hear this appeal. Julian Assange is facing 18 charges, including 17 counts under the U.S. Espionage Act. WikiLeaks reveals some of the most horrific abusers by the U.S. military. If convicted, Assange could face up to 175 years in prison. Peru's Congress has voted to begin impeachment proceedings against left-wing President Pedro Castillo. The opposition-led chamber approved the motion with a majority of 76 to 41 on March 14th. It was introduced by a member of the Popular Renovation and was backed by other right-wing parties, including Popular Force. The impeachment motion is reportedly based on 20 points, including contradictions and lies during the fiscal investigations and ministerial appointments. The opposition has claimed that Pedro Castillo is morally unfit to govern, accusing him of corruption. He has also been accused of treason merely for saying that he would open a referendum to allow Bolivia access to the Pacific Ocean. Castillo must now appear before Congress on March 28 to present his defense. The impeachment will be put up for debate and then a final vote. 
87 votes will be needed to remove Castillo from office after the impeachment trial. Right-wing parties had also mounted an unsuccessful attempt to impeach Castillo in December. Opposition forces have led a sustained campaign against the president in Congress, using tactics like threatening to not approve his cabinet. Castillo has changed ministers repeatedly and recently formed a new cabinet for the fourth time. He will address Congress on March 15th. Meanwhile, commentators and Peru Libre members have said that the opposition will have difficulty in obtaining the necessary votes. And finally, thousands protested across Sudan on March 14th in a show of continued resistance to the coup. Security forces in the capital of Khartoum fired tear gas and stun grenades as people approached the presidential palace. Hundreds of thousands of people in Sudan have been taking to the streets since the coup on October 25th. The mass uprising is being coordinated by 5,200 resistance committees, which were also instrumental in the 2019 revolution. Heavy repression has led to the killing of at least 87 protesters till now. Over 3,300 others have been injured. Dozens of protesters and movement leaders remain in custody of the junta forces and are at risk of torture. The people have rejected negotiations or compromises with the military and have demanded full civilian control. Meanwhile, the center and right-wing parties which form the forces of freedom and change have once again favored a compromise. The UN and the African Union have also decided to jointly facilitate a settlement. This will be based on the 2019 constitutional document. The push for a civilian-led government and a dialogue by Western and regional powers has been condemned by protesters. They have argued that these actions have worked to legitimize the coup. The resistance committees in Khartoum have presented their own charter for a civilian transitional government. Its proposals include new governance structures, prosecution of coup leaders, and reforms of the military and the economy. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.